What we're going to do today is we're going to remove a piece of glass from a uh, side light that's going inside a uh, doorway. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand down this finish with 40 grit just to knock out some of the big chunks. And we'll eventually finish it with uh, 80 to 100 grit. I'm going to remove the old caulking and remove the glass. So the first step up is safety. A little protection, put on the dust mat. We've got 40 grit on here and we're just going to get rid of this stuff. So what we've done here is we've broken the seal. The seal is the this paint line that's between the uh, glazing and the uh, actual frame and just right all the way along here with the 40 grit we've just knocked it down to the point where it's actually going to be a lot easier to be able to get the uh, old glazing out without actually ripping or tearing into the wood because we don't want to do that even though we're just taking out all the glass. I've also done the same thing along here. I've only flattened it out because that's as far as we can go with this. Now our budget's about a dollar so we're going to try to keep this flat without getting a little overboard on getting it perfectly stripped. So that's the goal for this so far. Next step up is removing the glazing and then removing the glass. So here's the old glazing. We're gonna try to, we'll use a, uh, just by using a utility knife, you can pretty much dig into the back behind it. Just try and be careful. We don't wanna ruin this line as much as possible. As you can see, this comes out pretty easy. Um, we also have a chisel. An old chisel, beater chisel, beater, beater, and you can just move, move along on both ends. We don't have to worry about the glass too much, so we can just pretty much go. Make sure you wear your safety glasses, gloves, the helmet, uh, body suit made out of armor, whatever. But you want to be sure that you don't want to smash the glass and get it in your eyes or in your mouth or in your coffee. Okay, um, so I'm going to take all this out and then I'm going to clean up this edge. Okay, you got to be careful about a couple of things when you're doing this. One of them is to make sure you get the little points, the little metal bits out. Needle nose pliers work well. A lot of times you'll run into them when you're cleaning this up. And you're like, oop, boom, there's one. And so the best way to get them out is just to, uh, just to, just to wrestle them until you get them out like splinters. And these are the old fashioned kind, they're just a little bit just little bits of metal so you gotta make sure your, those are all cleared out and that's why uh, you want to be careful when you're using tools. Okay of the three types or three ways three methods of getting uh, the junk out of the sides here so we can get the new glass in I'm going to use two of them one is a uh, heat gun which we'll use another one would be chemical stripper uh, which you could just lay in there and it would really eat the stuff up and you could just scrape it out really easily uh, but we're going to use this uh, because one it's less expensive um, than buying a $40 thing of uh, paint stripper. Uh, and then we'll use sandpaper to finish it off. And this is uh, this is what it looks like. Perfect world. You, I won't go too fast, but you get, you get the idea. Uh, you really have to get close to get to see what I've done. I just got a good edge. Now when I was using the heat gun, I just want to let you know that you don't really want to do this edge. Not much anyway, or be very careful because there's glass on the other side. If you heat it up, then what will happen, or may happen, or could happen, is that the glass will break. And you don't want that, because then you're replacing that glass. We don't want to do Hello, that. Hello, and uh, welcome back to... Well, actually, you didn't go anywhere, so... You, well, at least I don't think you went anywhere. Anyway, we're going to put the glass in. Uh, what I did is I did a knockdown sand, and then I gave it a coat of primer, because that's all we're going to do, keeping it simple. And... Um, what I'll do is, um, after, since it's been primed and moderately dry, uh, we'll simply just put a very thin, thin, thin bead of caulking in the uh, in the crack, in the corner of where the glass is going. And it's basically as thin as you can get it. The only reason that this is going to be in here at all, it's not so much that it's going to seat the glass and actually hold the glass in, as it is going to uh, make guarantee that there's no oops, no water uh, penetration. And I'm very careful about making sure you get all the way around and you create a perfect seal. And that's the whole gist of this. But before you do this, of course, make sure that the glass fits. Uh -huh. Yeah, alright, well, let's just hope it fits. Um, okay. And if some squeezes out, just let it stay out. You can knife it out later. Here's our glass. And all I'm going to do is seat it in there. Very simple. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. Once it's in there, I'll give it a little 
just a little wiggle. The other thing it, this will, the uh, caulking will do is help keep it from vibrating because the there's a bit of a curve to it and it's going to not only sit in there and, and keep water from getting in and getting out, uh, create a good thermal barrier and uh, also keep it from rattling. Um, I don't have points, usually little metal things that you stick in here, but it's a small piece of glass so I'm not really overly concerned about it. Once I glaze this, um, it's actually going to be more than enough to hold the glass together and hold it in. So here we go. The, the glass is in. Now let's glaze. I'm going to go warm the putty up with my hands and then uh, I'll show you how to do that. Okay, here goes. Um, basically this is 33 and a third. It's what I use for all glazing and it's um, pretty miserable stuff to work with. Uh, you want to make sure it's pliable so you play with it as much as you can without wasting too much time or making small figurines and trying to sell them at craft shows. Take the uh, and get a, a, a good rope started and what I like to do is get it worked up to a fairly consistent. Once you get it started, just send it in there. And as you can see, I'm kind of tapping and pulling at the same time, just trying to get a consistent amount along the line. Now this stuff can be really frustrating to work with um, if you haven't used it a lot or you don't do this kind of frequently. It can drive you insane. So this video may get cut short if I lose my patience, but I won't. Uh, just a clean, regular, fairly stiff uh, putty knife seems to do the trick. And there is only one trick of doing this. And then once it's in, I'll just, once again, kind of seed it. I'm just pushing it in there. Not being too fussy and I'm letting it bulb out a little bit towards the glass. But the only reason I'm doing this is I want a good edge. And if I get a good edge, then it'll be a lot easier to uh, follow the line once I start to do what I'm right about to do. A little excess, wipe it off. Okay, so you're gonna have mitered corners, but the trick here is, is that notice how flat the blade is um, against, um, against the corner of where we're gonna create this little uh, angled um, angled thing. There's got to be a term for that. Uh, so then it's just a matter of drawing it across. And you're going to have little wiggles in, in this stuff because, well, you know, the, the mullion itself has got some waves to it. You're just going to have to deal with it because life isn't perfect. Now you just maintain that flatness that, and draw it all the way across right up to the very top. And then pivot and come right up like that. Um, then what happens is that you can peel this away, whoops, not too bad. Stuff is sticky and like I said, it is a bit miserable. And then once it, uh, once you can pull it away, look at all the extra you have and it's almost enough to do another one. So as you can see, <laughs> it's everywhere. Um, as you can see, it's pretty easy to get it once you get it. But like I said, the trick is to keep the blade as flat as possible. Yeah. Cool. All right.